All right, so if you don't mind introducing yourself for the people who could know who you is. My name's Eric Hicks. You know, I was born and raised in D.C., you know, lifelong resident, you know, love the city. You know, I love everything about the city. You know, I love black folks. And, you know, just, we want to, you know, you know, you know, start our thing, you know, the bar understood. It's, uh, it's something, you know, for us, it's by us. And, um, you know, it speaks to the urgency of now. Uh, you know, it speaks to a lot of different things. And, um, you know, just mainly want people to understand, you know, the urgency of now. You know, we are at urgent times. You know, we can, we can celebrate, you know, uh, how far we've come, but we really need to, you know, to focus on where we need to be. And um, and I think you know what I aim to bring to the discussion is enlightenment, and uh, you know, and just you know, educating people on what our options are, and also just to remind people that you know, black folks, we're not a monolith. You know, we're like any other people. You know, no one person speaks for us, and I don't ever want people to you know get into that mode where they think that just because they hear from one person, that one person speaks for us because they don't. Okay, okay, okay. That's that's real. That's real. That's that's much needed platform. I believe we building here. Um, um. I, so I had a chance to check out a reading that you um put out. Um, and you specifically talk about Trump and the false narrative surrounding the over this black male black men support or black support for Trump. Do you mind elaborating on that um, and your issue with, with this narrative input? Well, I think it's a false narrative, first and foremost, you know, uh, that that you have, you know, these swaths of black men uh, supporting Trump. You may have pockets of people supporting Trump. Let me say, first and foremost, uh, I'm not a Democrat and I'm not a Republican. You know, neither party is for us. You know, that doesn't mean that we forsake the process, but but we need to correct narratives because when narratives are powerful, and this is how we get put in boxes, you know, where people think that that uh, 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 a Steve Harvey or, or or a rapper like a, a Sexy Red, they don't speak for us. I know they don't speak for me, you know. So they don't speak for the people that I see every day. Uh, we are, are not Trump supporters. Uh, I don't know people, you know, uh, that are uh, Trump supporters and. Um, and, and I just feel that, that that narrative needs to be corrected because narratives are powerful. And if you have people constantly clinging to a narrative that you know black folks are suddenly uh, switching over to Trump, I just think that it's dangerous. Oh, oh okay, okay. And you 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 compare um, you you have a, you mentioned the Confederacy. You mentioned the Confederacy. Um, Elaborate on that. What? T tell me about your your correlation with this confederacy that we into now. Well, I don't think that you know when when uh, we say into now, I don't think that the confederacy in the United States uh, it never died. The confederacy is it's an ideology. You know, it's an ideology, and and it's something that live on, you know, through 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 people, and. And, you know, just to give you an analogy, you know, it's not like, you know, for example, you know, when they say the systems, you know, uh, systems, systems can't be racist. And I, and to a, you know, to a degree, you know, I agree. But the thing is, is if you have people and you put people in power and those people operate systems and those people have a certain ideology, then those systems become racist. So when I say that the Confederacy is alive and well, what I mean is that the Confederacy is an ideology. And it's an ideology that everything in this country, it has to be defined through the lens of whiteness. And, you know, and I vehemently disagree with it. I disagree with it and, you know, and I'm willing to put my life on the line to, to make sure that people understand that me personally, and I know I speak for other strong brothers, I'm not going backwards. I can't speak for, you know, for the masses, but I know the guys that I know, the guys that I love, we're not going backwards. Yeah. No, we're not going backwards. It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. And and what people, you know, it's, it's America, you know, America's a funny place in that, you know, and I say funny not to mean in a laughing way. It's really a dangerous funny 
because you have you have a country that that has has taken history and you have romanticized it to a degree. You romanticize people being pillaged. You romanticize people being raped. You romanticize people having land taken from them. You uh, romanticized uh, genocide. All of these different things that you romanticize, and, and it gives credence to the saying that we see happening in real time. That if you repeat a lie long enough, that people will begin to believe that lie. Where, where, where? So, so your your issue is that he does not talk to black people. You mentioned in this writing, as you say, he, he talks at them. Well, let me just say this, you know, when because you know I could go on, you know, on and on and on about uh, you know uh, former President Trump. Uh, my thing is this, you know, you have a lot of um, you have a lot of tropes, you know, and a lot of those tropes about black people, they you know they directly relate to the the campaign to rewrite history that took place after the Civil War. So you know this is. You know, this is where you got you know a lot of these tropes about um, the lazy Negro, uh, the black rapist. First and foremost, if black people were lazy, how in the fuck did America get built? You know, you 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 had people as as Brother Malcolm said, it, it worked from can't see in the morning to can't see at night. So you know, if we were lazy, how in the fuck did this country get built? But on another note, you know, just ask yourself though, you know. Uh, you know, when they come with a trope such as a trope of people being lazy, I want to see how many people in society would get up and go to work every day and not earn a dime for it and tell me that they wouldn't feel a certain kind of way about it. You know, so not to, you know, to, to deviate too far from what I was saying is, is that in my opinion, he represents something. I don't call it the Confederacy. I call it the Neo-Confederacy because People think of, of the Confederacy, you know, in the terms of uh, black people being in chains. You know, just like anything in history, it evolves. So you're not talking about people being, you know, literally uh, in chains, even though they are black folks still in chains, you know, behind the prison walls. But when I say neo-Confederacy, you know, what I mean and, and what I think it's important for us to under, uh, you know, understand is, is that I'm talking about living in a society where everything is judged through the lens of whiteness. And our kids, they're not allowed to aspire to certain levels because they are always gonna be a system that tells them that you shouldn't aspire to be X, Y, Z, that you can only be this. And so, and, and this is what he represents, he represents you know, a time where where everything in this country was defined through a lens of whiteness. And when people feel that power slipping away, you know, people get dangerous. So when I go as far as to say that uh, people that you see at his rallies, uh, uh, every single person is a racist, um, I probably could make that argument. But at the same time, what I will say is this, a lot of people even, you know, even, and let me say this before I go further, because this yeah. is something that I told you before that I wanted to clarify. Yeah. Is that when I use the term white, you know, when I use the term whiteness, just because a person is white, that don't mean that they subscribe to the ideology of whiteness. You know, whiteness to me is a very bad thing. Just because a person is white, I don't mean that they subscribe to the ideology of whiteness. You know, whiteness is 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 pretty much, you know, what you know, to to me, it's you know, uh the cause of a lot of what happens in the world that's bad. And um, and I know a whole lot of older black folks who fought their whole lives, you know, fighting against whiteness. So, you know, yeah. I wanted to clarify that, but uh, to finish my point, he, I won't, I won't go so far to say that those people were racist, but they all subscribe to the notions of whiteness. So you take, uh, the, you know, the, the white person at their rally, you know, who 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 is, you can call him a blue collar. Um, the thing is, is this, is that 
even though they're trained in whiteness will never, you know, uh, lead him to uh, a place uh, greater than, you know, where his lot of light is, uh, his, uh, his lot of life is, he is willing, you know, to stay aboard that train because he understands that, that just being on the train of whiteness, you know, it gives him uh, a certain degree uh, of power, at least, you know, uh, whether it's imaginative or, 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 you know, whether it's something that's figurative, but it, to him, you know, it, it gives him that kind of power, you know, or her. Okay. Um, what about this? Because um, I hear you, right? And do you give Trump any credit? Do you give him any credit, actually? Because, I mean, a lot of brothers, I think, from what I heard on the street, you know, they, they support Trump. And I know you even, you you got out, um, you, you've been locked up for 30 years, and you got out on the first the first step. First step. First step. Uh, um, do you like like do you give Trump any credit for even the first step act and also do you give him any credit for calling out the establishment as it is because I I think I I learned a lot of I, I found a lot of support for Trump as he was calling out and trolling the the um the democratic establishment and and, and, and talking trash calling people out so do you give him any credit for for that? Fake news was a big thing that took my um, caught my attention as it related to that. So, what do you think about that? No, I don't give him credit for the First Step Act only because, and and and, and, and let me be clear, it's not to say you know by me saying I don't give him credit for it, that doesn't mean that I give credit to the Democratic Party because they're responsible for the mess as well. Uh, this is the thing, Tate. All of these, you know, right now, you know, people who look at Trump, right, and, 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 and it disgusts me that, you know, you have people who say, ah, oh, you know, black folks relate to Trump, you know, because he's going through, you know, uh, criminal justice. First of all, I'm pretty sure that uh, your mother, your grandmother, my grandmother, my mother, these people were not criminals. So we need to, you know, dispel the notion that uh, somehow, you know, him being a criminal, uh, he relates to black folks. It's, a, it's another trope first and foremost, and, it, and it's very disrespectful to a lot of black folks who never broke the law their whole lives, which is a majority. So, but I give him no credit because I understand the process. And remember, I recently graduated from Georgetown School of Law. So when you try to pull you know, the, the wall over a person's head and, and that you say, oh, you know, well he signed the First Step Act. Let's be clear. The First Step Act, it wasn't always the First Step Act. It was something that was called the, the Smarter Sentencing Act. And it was, and, and I had it because I was a law librarian. And that, that act itself was maybe like a, a thousand something pages, right? Uh, and, and it was a, a radical, uh, it, it, it would have represented a radical change in uh, the, the federal, you know, the, how, how federal criminal law is applied. That never passed uh, because you had uh, a group of Republicans led by uh, Mitch McConnell. Uh, you know, people in jail call him Mitch the Bitch McConnell. Um, they refused to to even allow it up for a vote, and that was in 2012. Okay, so now when Trump comes along, because it's political, you know, politically expedient, now they decide. Well, hey. You know, what's, you know, how can we get the black vote? Because let's be clear, you don't do it because you care about black people, because your history tells me otherwise. So you don't do this because you care about black people. You do it because A, you think that, hey, if I do this, then maybe, maybe that uh, I can pull a pocket of votes uh, away from Democrats, even if they don't vote for me, they won't vote for whoever the, uh, you know, the, the, the nominee of that party. And then B, you do it because, yeah, you know, you want votes, but, I've told uh, people in prison that asked me, uh, and either you know, this was staff who asked me, and um, and I'll tell you that you know when people ask me, uh, you know when I was in jail, uh, you know if if your life sentence, you know if it gets overturned, would you go to the White House? <laughs> Fuck no. This is what I told them. Under no circumstances. Not only would I would not only would I not go see Trump. Let me be clear. I wouldn't go see Biden either. Because I because I, I really don't I don't respect either you know either individual, and I think I've told you before, and I'll repeat it again, you know, uh, 
when you know when I see this guy Trump, let me you know let me explain to you what I see because I don't look at him through you know through a terms of like a contemporary view. I look at him through the lens of history. So a lot of people don't know uh, you know uh, Jefferson Davis, uh, Andrew Johnson, uh, the Harry Birds, the James Eastlands. You know when I see him, I see those type of people. I see guys who committed crimes against black women on plantations for decades or centuries with impunity. You know, this is what I see when I see him. And when I say crimes, you know the crime that I'm talking about. You know, it's right. that exactly. so 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 and 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 you know, just to be clear, you know, when I see Biden, I see another version of that. I see the white, you know, male who even if you didn't commit the crime, you knew it was being committed and you didn't do a damn thing. So, so you know, to me, both of them are damned. And, you know, what we have to ask ourselves, you know, like, um, where does that leave us? You know, but, but, you know, just to circle back to your point, um, no, uh, I give him no credit for it. And, uh, you know, uh, was I happy that he did it? <laughs> Fuck yeah, I, I was happy, but you're not, you, but you can't talk at me though. You, you can't tell me, oh, you know, he did X, Y, Z because I understand how the process works. And my thing is, is that you have to question the country. Why was I even in the position anyway? Why was I in jail for 30 years for a crack case where I, I'd never been convicted of a crime and there was nobody who died? So you have to ask yourself, like, why was I even in jail for 30 years? Why was I sitting there with two life sentences? Why was my brother sitting there with a life sentence, two? You know, and, and why did my other brother have to do uh, 26 plus years? You know, so do I give you credit, you know, for finally doing something, you know, doing the right thing, something that should, you know, that, that should never even happen? I don't give you credit for that. So no, I don't give them credit for it. I don't give them credit for it today. I don't give them credit for it yesterday. And I never will give them credit for it. Okay, that's okay. And, and I mean, me, me again, like, cause I think I'm speaking from, uh, I, I think I appreciate Trump the troll. I think I appreciate Trump, the entertainer. I think I appreciate Trump for calling a lot of bullshit out that we all knew was happening in the establishment. So these are the things that I found to give Trump credit for, at least from my angle, right? Cause when you start talking about fake news and then when you start calling out things like, I'm gonna point out something that I I, I I noticed in the plan, you know, when it's running out, when they was running for these campaigns, Biden and Trump, he introduced the platinum plan, which Ice Cube also endorsed this plan. He was like, yeah, I'm gonna endorse this plan. And this plan that I noticed, the difference in the language, at least what stood out to me, in Trump's plan, he spoke directly to black people. Whereas though in Biden's plan, he said people of color. So that language to me speaks to a, a, a neoliberal issue that we've been dealing with, where we've been as black people jumbled up into this people of color category where I applauded Trump for at least pointing that out. And I give, I, these is the things that, that stood out to me where I gave him credit for. Mm -hmm. Well, 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 let me say this. You know, I can find a person, you know, entertaining, but that's all, meaning that I would never throw my support behind that person. Now, uh, the Democratic Party, you know, which I will get to because I have issues with them. I have a whole lot of issues with them. But, um, you know, for, for him, and let me just, you know, circle back to something I was saying previously about uh, how, you know, people feel that uh, because he is going through the, the, the criminal justice system that that somehow makes him uh, identify with the black struggle. It's a fucking joke, okay? He could never identify with the black struggle and if he even knew what it was like, you know, to walk through this country as a black man for a day, trust me, he would be crushed, crushed under the pressure. So right now, I don't view Trump as being on trial. You know what I view as being on trial? I view whiteness as being on trial. And, and, and the reason why I say that is this, because he had the view of America where everything, as I told you before, is it's judged through 
the lens of whiteness. That means every single facet of, of, of uh, Americanism, democracy, everything is always scrutinized through the lens of whiteness. Now, right now, people say that, um, that you know, he's tearing down the system, but you know what I would argue is, is that it's not him, you know, uh, Donald uh, J. Trump that's tearing down the system. It's whiteness that's tearing down the system because you know when you saw all of those whiteies down uh, the Capitol on January the sixth, they weren't there really because of a presidential election so much as they was there to preserve what I call whiteness and what I and what I call the neo Confederacy. Those people, that, they, don't, they don't give a fuck about you, they don't give a fuck about me, only to the extent that they are allowed to, to, you know, to hold on to tropes, they are allowed to dictate everything that happens in your life. And you know, remember I told you before, you know, something that Baldwin said, and it's something that I always turn back to, and that's that, that these people, you know, and it's not just, you know, uh, conservative, it's liberal as well. But, you know, these people, they use rules to judge us that they've never lived by. So, so, and, and I say that, and, and so in that regard, it was funny to me, uh, you know, when Trump became president because he broke every norm, you know, that they used for years to, 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 when I say castigate us in every possible way, you know, every possible way that they can castigate black men, black women, you know, uh, for uh, mistakes that people make. You know, mistakes that all other races make. But, you know, they use that to to somehow, you know, make us uh, uh, create this vision of us being less than. So it was, it was beautiful for me to see that bitter pill of contradiction shove down their throat and make them have to accept everything that they have said negative about people who look like me. You know, like, like, listen, you can't find no group of people in this fucking world that's not flawed. No group, not a single group. But, you know, I was, you know, we're always put on a stage, you know, and, and, and people make fun of it. And, you know, sometimes without help. But um, I understand what you say, you know, about, you know, him, uh, you know, making a mockery of the media. I, I'm not a big fan of the media because I realized that much of what was done to us it would not have been, a, you know, allowed to have been done, you know, but for the media decision to uh, knowingly and willingly aid in a bet, you know, uh, all of these tropes. So, so yeah, I don't, I don't feel any sympathy, you know, for anything, you know, any harm that he inflicts on the country. I feel no sympathy for America in that regard. No, I don't. You know, but I just, but I also need to be clear that even though uh, I can sit back and I can smile at, you know, the, the damage that's being done, I also recognize the the danger in him as a person and the ideology that he represents. And that's the thing that I think that people don't realize. They, they blur those lines. And I can't blur those lines without thinking of, of your daughter, uh, you know, the day that she had kids, you know, like how could, could, could I credibly stand in front of those kids knowing that when there was a time, you know, for me as a black man to stand up, I didn't. You know, I was allowed to be bought off because, uh, you know, he may have had policies that, that may have uh, benefited blacks, but remember this, you know, you can have a policy that benefits uh, black communities, but my thing is this though, you know, and I, and I say this with all sincerity, you know, if you don't wanna be labeled a fucking racist, then stop doing racist shit, you know. Um, you look at his cabinet, why, ask yourself, why is it that uh, Steve Bannon was allowed to serve in his cabinet when he gave a platform to to uh, the alt-right, uh, uh, basically a uh, white supremacist? Why was Stephen Miller given uh, a position in his cabinet when he did everything that he could to make sure that black farmers weren't able to receive, you know, like uh, any kind of forgiveness, you know, in their loans, you know, uh, in relation to lands that uh, United States uh, arbitrarily took uh, from black farmers. Why is it that he attacks uh, 
uh, black women's uh, campaigns uh, again, you know, for, for diversity. So again, these are your buddies. So now, if, 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 if I'm gonna be a, a judge of you, then I'm gonna judge you uh, in totality by the people that you choose to associate yourself with. So again, if you don't want me to label you a racist, then stop doing racist shit. Because if you and me, right, if you and me right now, right, we're building a house and we ask this dude to come and help us, right? And for every brick that you put in place to build your home, every time you and I go over here to get a barrel of bricks, he take two or three bricks away. Now, 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 now mind you, he said, well, hey, I paid for all the bricks over here. You know, I paid for the bricks for you all to build your house, but you're not doing me a favor if every time I put bricks in place, you take bricks out, you know? And this is what I need black people to understand is that when I say that, you know, you do racist shit, you, you, you tell me how many black men or how many black women did you put on the federal bench? And people need to understand the power of the federal court because you don't dismantle something, you know, like the neo-confederacy, you know, just with uh, legislation. You need the federal bench. The federal bench, people don't understand that. Just ask women, you know, what happened with abortion. Just ask women how important the federal bench is. So now, when you put all white males, or predominantly all white males on the bench who share a certain ideology of conservatism, then my thing is this, what, what does that signal to me, you know, uh, who has uh, grand boys, you know, people that got granddaughters, you know, like, you mean to tell me that out of all of these white males that you put on the bench, you couldn't find like a single qualified black male, female, and and on top of that, remember, you and me, we can sit here and we can write any policy, Tate. We can write any policy. But 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 the thing is that this, if I know that I that, that that I have a leg up on you in the courts, you know what I tell you? Guess what? Pass your fucking policy. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna challenge it in federal court, and you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna strike your policy as unconstitutional, and they're gonna find a means to do it. So this is why it's important to have the judiciary. You have to understand you know, how this thing works, and you have to understand, I'm not telling all black people to, dis, uh, to, to say uh, fuck Trump. What I'm saying is this, if you wanna throw your support behind any candidate, any candidate, you make sure that motherfucker got enough heart to come to your community and speak directly to you. Don't talk to me about a whole bunch of white, uh, 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 to a whole bunch of white folks that live in Iowa, that live in goddamn South Dakota. They don't know shit about me. They don't know anything about my struggle. So don't tell them about me. You come to my community, show me that you can come there and you can face the crucible of all of these old black men, all of these old black women who feel a certain kind of way because for me, these are the people, for me, in my view, that represent the finest of America because they've been through the shit, the bullshit. They've been through it. So these, you know, these are my heroes. When I look at heroes, I don't, you know, I don't look in uh, the book uh, to, to praise uh, presidents or whatever, you know. I think of the Miss Beatties, the, the Ma Queens, the Ma Felders. These are the people that took the full brunt of bullshit that the United States, you know, have always put upon people that look like us. So I would just say that he should come to the community. Come to the community and show me that you can withstand the crucible of being challenged by all of these black folks who got real questions that they want to answer. And show me that you view them and us as something more than a trope. Because me personally, and I'm, and, and in this regard, I would hope that I speak for all black folks. When you sit down with me, you sit down with your equal. You're not sitting down with somebody who just, uh, who, who wants to uh, be uh, happy and bow my head. Not you sitting down with your equal. I will never put any man above me. I don't give a fuck who he is. So when you see me, you sitting down with your equal. You know, and I don't think, and, and me personally, I just don't think that, that he views us in those terms. So, you know, just because you may, you may see a bum on the street, Tay, you may give him money. But that don't mean that you respect this motherfucker, though. You may feel sorry for him. So just because he may have policies that, uh, you know, that may aid black folks financially, my thing is this, it's so much bigger 
than people just having, you know, finances. It's bigger than that. It's way bigger than that. I, I agree with a lot you said. I, I, the black independence is what you're speaking to. You're speaking to his tone of infinite superiority and whiteness and, 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 and perpetuating that in this system. And um, I think, like I said, when I was mentioning the platinum plan, I think that was supposed to speak directly to facilitating ownership to black black people, right? And I, like I said, that stood out to me when you put a dollar amount to black people. Now, um, when I think about, like, cause I know you was locked up a lot, of, but you still was paying attention to the news. But I, when I think about what was happening on the ground, as far as organizing was concerned in the streets, and um, like the parallel of what was happening in politics and the national stage of politics, on the stage leading up to the campaign, we had a lot of the Black Lives Matter energy um, that fueled last year, the, um, the last election that we was in. And um, that left a pretty bad taste in the black community to fall apart of that whole Black Lives Matter movement. And when black folks had that platform to have had it destroyed in, in such a way that was just I mean, it, it didn't represent black integrity. It didn't represent what we want, needed it to represent. And instead, when we had had the, the chance, we, um, we, we, we got greedy, we did things, and, and we also was a bit abusive. Um, the BLM, we had this platform. We had this platform mm -hmm. and like I, I, I personally, I understood because I worked right up under a lot of that nonprofit mm -hmm. organizing and, and all that space. So I, I sit right there and witness the the, the well-meaning whites, right, mm -hmm. to come and participate, mm -hmm. and I also witnessed the um the 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 overwhelming feminist energy, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. that would oftentimes alienate. With these people wasn't right. A lot mm -hmm. of the shit that they was doing, they would white person go to the back and like treating people as second class. So the frustration that I would understand from the right wing that was coming as a result of what was happening on the ground, mm -hmm. like what do we say about that? Cause it's, it seemed like it's also accountability on our end when we start trying to talk about blackness. You see what I'm saying? Cause it's like black whiteness and, and, and these things fuel each other. So well, let me say this. I heard something today, you know, this morning. You know, I was sitting there, I was drinking my coffee, and and, 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 and I heard something, and you know, and it was it was actually get toward this subject, and it, and, and, and it actually hit home, in that, uh, and it was in relation to this sister who just lost her job at Harvard, and and what uh, what the brother was saying was that oftentimes, you know, when you have uh, black groups, you have black organizations, right? You had uh, you had right wing uh, you know right wing uh, neo Confederate type uh, groups who they begin the attack and black folks finish it off. And what I mean by that is is that that's not to say that that uh, there weren't uh, fallacies in uh, the Black Lives Matter you know their overall movement you know there but but you know there are no movements that are perfect you know people. People always, you know, revert back to what I say is the urgency of man. So that's not to say that you know their movement, their, their things about their movement that I don't agree with, you know, that I vehemently disagree with. But but anytime that black folks are able to coalesce around something that gives value to their existence, a part of me has to support it. And so, so even though you know I could uh, I could find you know different parts of it that I don't agree with, you know uh, as Brother Malcolm once said, it won't be in public. I'll pull them to the side and I'll tell them this is what I disagree with. I'm telling you this, you know, so that I won't have to go out in public and tell you. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, you know you know you talking about law, right? And that's actually the politics that I subscribe to early on coming like coming home from prison and I just thought that was just we don't argue in front of white folks. That's just common sense, right? Or at least that was I thought, right? 
But when I seen this, you gotta think we've been gentrified in Washington, DC. So there's a lot of people that's coming into the city that don't give nail, they ain't a part of our culture and don't know nothing about it. And when I tell you that it was not a space for, they were calling us out mm -hmm. in front of whoever. And it was clearly about like, like we talking about not being organized right now. It was not possible for black men to participate mm -hmm. in this right here. Cause when I tell you that it was a war on who get the, who get the resources and who don't get the resources. Mm -hmm. And if you got all the foundations code and LGBTQ and feminist agendas into mm -hmm. their program dollars and, mm -hmm. con and like, pushing the black agenda via these foundations which mm -hmm. come from white Soros foundation money. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So black people are participating in something mm -hmm. that these white conservatives are on the other, they're receiving like, you can, I hear a lot of the white men going around saying it's okay to be white because they don't feel so good. It's okay to be white and that's their narrative now. Well, and and, I, and you got to understand that if you sit right there listening to people abuse people in the name of blackness and well, whiteness, you know? So, yeah, I mean, they say it's okay to be white, but I also, and this is what I, you know, what I meant before when I was talking about, you know, not allowing people to talk over your head, you know? When, 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 when you say that it's all right to be white, I'm going to challenge you on what do you mean by white? Because I told you that, that that you know there's a certain connotation that comes with that, and that doesn't um, you know that doesn't make every uh, person who happens to have a skin color this quote unquote white. Uh, that doesn't make them inimical. It doesn't make them evil. It's the ideology that I care about. You know what do you subscribe to? What do you believe in? So you know a lot of these men you know who say that uh, it's okay to be white. Well, when you say that, I have to look at I have to look at it from a historical perspective. And when you say that it's okay to be white, I always have to be clear from a historical perspective that I can't name any crime in this country that any uh, young black youth commits, uh, that anybody commit, that white men haven't already committed. The thing is, is that because you control the power levels, you always have a way to sanitize your image. So, so when you say to me that it's okay to be white, then you know, uh, then to me, I, I hear that different than maybe the average ear might hear that. You know, you're telling me that it's all right to rape, it's all right to plunder, you know, it's all right to take, it's all right to steal, and your crimes will always be greeted with a degree of impunity. So that's what I hear. I can't control what the next person hear, but when you say that to me, you automatically draw the line to me now, and I see, okay, you know what? You're my enemy because. I got kids, you know, you got kids. My brother, they got kids, we got grandkids. And my thing is, is that, and I've told you, I will be dead before I leave a world behind and they gotta fight the same battles that our great grandmothers and our grandmothers fought. And just, just, just think for one second, any movement in this country, just let your mind wander, any movement in this country for any kind of freedom, right? whether it's been a uh, woman's liberation, whether it's been civil rights, right? They've always petitioned for those rights because who had them? White men. So now when you tell me that it's all right to be white and you're a man and you're saying that to me, this is the lens through which I'm looking at that, you know? So now, because this thing, when women talked about liberation, they wasn't talking to black folks. We couldn't give them that liberation when a whole bunch of black motherfuckers was talking about civil rights, which I don't think, let me be clear, I don't think that any white male can give me civil rights. These are rights that I'm born with. So I will so I'll never tell you that you have the power to give me a right that I'm born with. When a motherfucker got off the boat coming from uh, Italy, uh, coming from Britain, they didn't have to petition for civil rights, so why should I have to petition for it? So you can't give me civil rights. I already have this, you know, I'm a man. So, 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 this, you know, this, this is what I mean, but, but, when you, you go back to those groups, right, I, I just think that people always have to put things in their proper perspective. And 
you can be a group and there can be things about your group that I disagree with. But if we all stand for blackness, then guess what? I'm gonna take you to the side. We're gonna discuss whatever it is that we need to discuss, but when we come out, we always have to come out at a united front because all of these right-wing people, remember, they specialize in creating animos amongst us. Because as long as you keep the seeds of animosity and you allow those seeds to fester, then we can never coalesce around any, you know, any point. So, so, so exactly. So, if you put on the forefront of the movement, knowing that us black folks, we spiritual beings, we're spiritual people, and you put sexual lewdness on the front of our movements, talking about homosexuality and and transgender, like these, they they was actually pushing sex workers, sex workers in the front of our on, on our movement. Let me so, ask you this, Dave. Yeah. Because remember. You know, and we, you know, it's, we always forget history. You know, people always tell you, you know, when, when, when our ancestors came over here, there were no homosexuals on those slave ships. So all this is learned behavior. But the thing is, is this though, is that, but we can't allow ourselves to be sidetracked. We can, you know, if a person may be gay and I disagree with uh, certain things that they do, I can pull them to the side and I can tell them, but I always have to remember, I always have to remember what's at the forefront because remember, all none of this stuff started in our community, Tate. Yeah, yeah. And so so it can be effectively managed while you while you take and, and you accomplish what your core vision is. But what happens is is that we spend so much energy on the side fights that we that by the time it comes to the big battles, we so fragmented and we can never deliver the knockout blow. So so that's why I brought that point up, because I was saying if you intentionally put these things in the forefront of our movement to try to divide people, this is where all the program dollars going into homosexuality, and this these are the people that gotta lead our movement, centering this sort of oppression, feminist. But guess what? Them. They don't have to lead our movement. Okay. People, see, remember, you know, people ceded them that authority. My thing is is this, remember I told you, you know, that that I would never sit down with Trump. Yeah. Uh, when I, you know, when, when we got released for the first step back and I wouldn't sit down with Biden, yeah. I don't, you know, because as, as men, I don't respect either person. Uh -huh. So, but the thing is, is that if I ever was to, yeah. or any black person, what they would need to understand is, is that we don't sit down as a subordinate. We sit down as an equal. Yeah. So when you sit down with any of these organizations, right, the one thing that they have to understand is, is that, you know, they, there are certain terms, you know, to, to, uh, to any movement, right, that I don't think that you can afford to, to have any kind of like a debate over. So that's not to say that if you are a homosexual that I don't care about you as a human being. I care about you, but the thing is, is that, but I'm not gonna put your struggle at the forefront because there's a whole lot of old black people who came way before you, who lived and died, and they lived and died where the United States never, you know, acknowledged their existence with like, with any kind of meaningful respect. And, and these are people that did everything the right way, you know, so, so, and, and, and if you happen to benefit from that, then so be it. So I think that's what's actually hit. That's the point that we hit on right there is that if if we know that, like I, like I was telling you, the issue, like we could be talking about Trump, and we talking about what made them spin this narrative that black men are supporting Trump, and I mentioned the BLM and the frustration that black men particularly were having as it related to us organizing and getting our communities together where we were out resource because outside money is facilitating the politics in our community via this Black Lives Matter movement. You gotta think this Black Lives movement as advertised on their website is to uproot patriarchy. Now this never been an issue in my community because like I could never see why that made sense if black men were sitting in, in jail incarcerated and dying in the streets and it's so many single mothers out here I couldn't understand why this was a thing 
on black, this national movement is talking about uprooting patriarchy. So when you start saying, when you start understanding the frustration that black men were having at this particular election cycle, and it's particularly against black women who were allowing themselves to be used by white supremacy ideas, this is the frustration that led to a lot of people to say, fuck that, I'm supporting Trump. You see, when I looked at Trump, when I seen the people, the black men that he was supporting, they look, those dudes look like me. They look like street guys. They look like, they didn't look like um, the Obamas in a Democratic establishment. They didn't look like these well polished black men. They look like rugged black men. So the same white men that he was attracting was the same black men that he was attracting black, poor, oppressed class black people who was sick of the bullshit as it relates to the Democratic Party because he was speaking to the, the frustration of us sick of the fake news and the narrative surrounding us. And the Democrats continue to push that by criminalizing black men. Well, let me say this. The, where I came from, right? And this is and this is what I say, you know, is in the power of narratives. Um, I didn't know any black men that supported Trump. And I still don't know any, uh, maybe a couple. Um, my thing is, is this, uh, you know, the black men I know, black men I respect, the black men I admire, we don't have political parties. Political parties, I said it before and I said it again, it's for suckers. You know, and you know, and it's sad to say that the American public, you know, uh, they've been played for suckers. But, you know, what I will say is this, I understand, you know, the frustration with the overall system. But the thing is, is this though, but what that won't make me do is, is that won't make me run to a person who doesn't respect my overall humanity. That's what it won't do. You know, if, if, if what I would say to, 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 to any, you know, the black men who, who support this guy, right? I can't tell you that you're wrong. You can believe what you want to believe, right? But what I, what, no, what, what I would say is, is this though, is that, and I've told you before, that to me, I can tell a lot about you by the people that you surround yourself with. And if the people around you know that he's chosen to surround himself with, if they are a hell bent on stymieing any kind of black progress, then what does that tell me about you? It doesn't mean anything that you would give me money on the side or you would, or you would create these programs if you're telling me that, oh, there's a caveat to that. And the caveat is, is that you can only go as high as this ceiling. So that means that, that your kids, my kids, and the kids that follow, they're not free to aspire you know, to, to achieve you know, heights that any white male could achieve and go even beyond. What he's saying is, what he's telling me is that basically this is an implicit agreement that you will always subscribe to the theory of whiteness. And I'm just not willing to do that. I'm not willing to do that for him. I'm not willing to do that for Joe Biden. I'm not willing to do that for anybody because I realize what's at stake. So I can't tell uh, uh, any black person whether they should vote for a Republican or whether they should vote for a Democrat. What I would tell them is, is that you make sure that however you choose to cast your ballot, you make sure that that person aligns himself or herself with things of substance that you believe in and they don't do racist shit. Because when you do racist shit, you're a fucking racist. When you do oppressive shit, you're a fucking oppressor. So that's the way I view it. Yeah. You know, and 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 that don't and that and that's not just singular to him. You know, that that goes toward the Democratic Party as well. Yeah. Because they're large, you know, a uh, 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 reason as to why we're in a position that we're in now. So don't run to black folks now to save you from. Uh, uh, who you perceive as the big bad Trump. Not, well, guess what? You know, for all of these years that black folks have been casting ballots for you, what do we have to show for it? it, it let me ask you this. Is it that we don't like Trump delivery? We don't like how he, how he said is it? Is it that we don't like how he's so asshole about who he is? Because I, I recall, um, I, and it's hard, I, I look back in the 60s, it was, a, and it's hard for me to find, but it was a neo-Nazi leader. He was in the, um, 
He came by himself with his little team, but then came to a nation of Islam conference. All black, all black motherfuckers, all black. And this was a racist neo-Nazi motherfucker. And these people had an agreement. They had a handshake. Well, we all understood. Look, I understand. Look, we ain't even got no problem. Actually, these is the bigger problem. Cause I understand you don't like me. I understand you don't like me. You you just don't want your interest is me not to fuck your door. Mm -hmm. That's what your interest is. That's what it came down to. That's what the handshake was, at least with this guy right here, right? So is that still a feeling? Is that a thing? Cause it seemed like that was pretty challenging to the system. Let me say this. Today, tomorrow. In the near future, right? I want you to go. One thing I can say about America, right? I think that the people, you know, uh, uh, it's definitely, you know, well documented the challenges that black men have been, you know, what we've gone through in this country, right? But, you know, as 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 a black man who has been raised by my grandmother, right? I think that uh, uh, if you ever want uh, uh, a moral or a spiritual compass, you know. Uh, if you ever feel as if you're losing your way, sit down and have a talk with an older black woman. And what I would challenge any black male to do, go to an older black woman, 70 something, 80 something, 90 something years old, right? And ask them how they feel about Trump. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, that it will be a feeling of contempt because they, for one, they've lived long enough so they've had to deal with these diabolical motherfuckers longer than we right. have, right? And, and, but, you know, it's, it's, they have, you know, they have a wealth of knowledge as to, they, they've been in America longer than we have. They've been on this earth longer than we have. They've seen, you know, the level of animus, you know, the different degrees of it that we've been subjected to. So, and, and, and time and time again, you know, uh, you, you, you know, these women have stood strong in the face of all of these different challenges in America. So I would just say that have a talk with them. If you ever feel, you know, if you ever want some degree of clarity, right? And that's why I say, I can't tell people uh, how to think or how to cash your ballot. But when you do it, you need to be informed as to, you know, what it is that you're voting for. Because there was a false narrative that was recently put out about uh, Minister Furrican. There, there was a, um, a thing put out that uh, Minister Furrican supported Trump. And it was put out by right wingers. Right, and what they said was was, uh, was that uh, that uh, you know Minister Farrakhan had threw his support behind Trump. But when you look at the video, that's not what he said. He applauded Trump for tearing down American institutions. But at the same time, in that very in that very same video, he also said that if you choose to throw your support behind this guy, beware, because. He's going to take uh, America to a different degree of hell, and he will take all of us with him. And so, so, and that all, you know, it leads me back to what I was saying about neo Confederacy, mm -hmm. you know, and about how in this neo Confederacy, people won't be walking around in chains. They won't be walking around in chains. Everything evolves, nothing stays the same. Lesser of two evils. Lesser of two evils. You believe in that type of book? I mean, you have to. I mean, if, 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 you know, if those are your options, you have to. But I think that you know, when you cash that ballot, don't be selfish. And when I say don't be selfish, what I mean is this. I can cash the ballot and I can cast it for, for the, the benefits that it may get me now. But I think it's even more important for you to think of what world will you be leaving for your kids? So, so I, I mentioned that, right? And part of my frustration, right? And I think, uh, I think black people overwhelmingly, even though we vote Democrat, I think for the most part, black people got conservative politics more on a lane of conservative politics. I'm not saying we line with Trump, but I think we got conservative politics in see, our position. Let me say this. I don't think that, and that's where we differ. I, I don't, I don't see, I don't, I don't call them conservative politics. You know, we have, we, we, our politics pretty much mirror the experiences that we've been through. So I wouldn't necessarily call them conservative because um, conservative politics are by and large responsible for the America that we see today. And when I say that, um, 
I say that with all due respect, but you know, a narrative, you know, that has been fed to the public about the party. They say, oh, well, you know, Reagan was a, a Republican and he freed the slaves. But, you know, to me, that's an intellectually dishonest argument yeah. because he did it, but he did it under the caveat that, well, you, hey, maybe if I free these people, they'll all agree to go to Africa. But I think that, that the most important part of that is, is this. It's true that during that time, the Democratic Party, they were the ones who fought for slavery. But, and this is the important part, they were also conservative. So I think that, you know, when you tell those stories, you have to, you know, attach labels. I don't think that black people are conservative. I think that we always live in, in, in our own bubble within our communities, and we always tried to do what was morally right. And I don't think that that made us conservative, because I don't think that conservative values around with what we believe and what we've been through. We've always been insular in, in like how we uh, address things. Everything had to be addressed on the community level. So I wouldn't call it conservative. I was just, I, I would just basically label that an ideology of, 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 of what, you know, of, of what we believe uh, based on, you know, our own experiences within our collective community. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and what I was, and, and the reason why I, 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 I thought or I, I sense more conservative politics with the black community and why I mentioned that, um, we got a lot of church going people. We got a lot of spiritual, religious people. Mm -hmm. And the conservative foundations, from what I understand, is more, mostly geared around those type of values. But it's a facade. And I'll tell you, it's a facade because my thing is this, you know, remember what I told you. Remember this, man. Yeah. James Baldwin. They don't live by the ideals that they use to judge us. So, so yeah. So it's one thing to talk about ideal. Okay, so we living under capitalism. So the root. We could talk about capitalism, or we could talk about conservative or liberalism, right. or, right. or it's a, it's a few layers to the system. And would you? root your cause and capital because capitalism socialism gonna come up to to be another issue because the democrats is seem to be leaning socialism mm -hmm. and the, and the cap and the communist i mean the the conservatives is all the way capitalist and we'll they put it this way when you use the word conservative i would just say this don't say conservatism say black conservatism because i think that black conservatism and white conservatism are two different things I would agree. I so, would agree. So, so if you say black conservatism, yeah, I know a lot of you know uh, older black males who were you know, who practiced black conservatism. But that black conservatism, you know, that they practice, it's nothing like the conservatism that white people practice. Yeah, it's, it's nothing. It's not even close. So, so this whiteness is what created this system, mm -hmm. and this whiteness is where we 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 try. Like, I mean, this they system. Well, that's what's on trial right it's now. It's their system. What so we mean? ain't gonna keep, if we can't keep living under their system and, and, and like y'all don't trip. They, they gonna absolutely cheat in their favor. That's capitalism. They gonna absolutely take advantage of every time we fuck up and don't read the rules the right way or the law the right way. They gonna capitalize. That's what capitalism is about. Capitalizing on people's mistakes. So if we understand that's what the system we living under, and these people got an unfair advantage, and it is what it is. But how do we go about unraveling this thing? Because we talk about solutions now, and, and to me, I'm like, I don't see no sense of keep building from a, a, a broken, like we gotta start from a whole new foundation. Well, I think, you know, and this was like one of the, you know, one of the last sections that I had wrote about, and what I sent you is, is that, you know, when you talk about solutions, I think that, that um, we, you know, it starts with us, but it's also incumbent on us to educate uh, the youth. And when I say educate the youth, what I mean is, is that we have to, to teach them how to think and we have to teach them the power that they already have. And I'll give you an example. Let's say I'm a five-star recruit and I got a letter of intent from the University of Alabama, right? We all know very well the history of Alabama. I'm very uh, familiar with the history of uh, Alabama politics. Um, my thing is, is this, as uh, an athlete, you don't realize the power that you have. Uh, I'm a five-star quarterback and I choose to go to the University of Alabama. Well, you know what? Off of my black ass, this country, uh, this, this, this university 
especially if I take them to the national title game, they're probably gonna make 20, 30, 40 million or more off of me, right? And my thing is, is this, you have power in this process. Don't, you know, to the young black athlete, I would tell them and I'll continue to tell them, don't go to a university in a state that doesn't align with your values. If you wanna make uh, the Alabamas of the world, the Mississippis of the world, if you wanna make them clean up their policies, then guess what? Let some of these top athletes stop going to Alabama. Let them say, ah, you know what? I think I'm gonna go to uh, a Jackson State. Um, I think I'm gonna go to uh, a Hamlin. Watch how quick those you know those states. Watch how quick they begin to clean up the policies. With you know, with respect to uh, the younger generation who have mastered the art of social media, you know, everything you do should have a purpose. You know, it should have a purpose, and it should have a purpose that's forward-looking. You know, we get caught up in in you know, everyone you know thinks about the importance of having something right now in this moment of maturity. And it's, yeah, you wanna have maturity because that pays the bill, but you also have to understand that a lot of people who came before us understood that certain things that they were fighting for, they would never see. But you fight for it because it's the right thing to do. So, uh, the, you know, the youth, they understand how to manipulate social media. Uh, you have athletes who are able to earn, even, you know, even if an athlete went to Hampton, through the NIL, he could still make uh, five, ten, fifteen million dollars. Uh, you know, because people they're not paying for the university; they're paying to see him. So you know, and, and so they have that degree of power. So I think that's the most important thing is is that you know we have to begin to we have to hold each other accountable first and foremost. For sure. But we also have to make sure that our kids that they get the right information. Exactly. You, you Speaking of kids, you mentioned uh, in, in, in your in your in your writing, you say we need to understand, starting with our youth, about the power that we have, especially our youth. We are responsible for our own freedom. The union did not free us; we freed ourselves. You mind elaborating on that? Because a lot of a lot of people think, you know, like the union. We hear that we say the union freed us. Like, tell us about that. Well, listen, the union. They were losing the Civil War. People need to understand that. Before blacks actively participated in the Civil War, the Union, they were losing the Civil War and they were losing it badly. You know, Lincoln realized that he didn't have a choice but to allow black men to fight for their freedom. He didn't have a choice. So now, when the opportunity presented itself, you know, black men destroyed the narrative. You know, you had a southern narrative, the Confederacy, oh, you know, um, uh, you know, black men won't fight for their freedom, you know, black men are cowards, and you know, just you know, because uh, you know, these guys lived on these plantations for their whole lives. But, you know, and 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 that's an argument for another day. But the reality is is that when it came time for black men to fight, whether they were in the south, whether they were in the north, black men took up arms and they agreed to fight. And without black participation, the, the, the union, they wouldn't have won the war. But you know, I'm critical of the union for what happened during the war, and I'm even more critical of them for what happened after the war. But it needs to be understood by all black folks that we only have to be thankful to ourselves for our freedom. No one freed us but us. And we always need to understand that. You know, uh, and, 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 and that's along the lines of why I said that I would never, uh, when you ask me would I thank Trump for the First Step Act, and I said, fuck no, why? Why should I thank you for something that was long overdue? So, and why should I thank the union for something that was responsible, you know, who black folks made possible? So I don't give any uh, thanks to the union because guess what? When a lot of black folks left the South and came, you know, to these northern states, what did they experience? They experienced racism. So it wasn't just something that existed in the South. So a lot of white men died uh, fighting for the Union, but in the end, we were, we were solely responsible for freeing ourselves.